Hello everybody, welcome to fermentation lecture number four. You guys are about halfway there. Good job, I congratulate you for getting through with the equipment, ingredients, and brewing process so far. Now we're going to go into fermentation. You may notice everything gets a little bit more difficult, a little bit more challenging, scientific, with lots of process and remembering things going along as we go into the professional brewing world. Now you have fermentation. And this is a lot of the part where brewers write off. It's the, probably the most crucial part. It's gonna take two weeks, so this is the second part of becoming a brewer, I would say, technically. And you're monitoring and making sure fermentation is going nice and smooth. So after you pitch your yeast at the end of the brewing process, and you allow your yeast to ferment, during that process, it takes two weeks. We're gonna go over what you need to be doing during these two weeks to make sure fermentation goes nice and smooth. You will first be checking your gravity readings every day for a professional brewery. When you have a 10 barrel system and you have the sample port very easily, just open a valve, get a little sample, fill up your test tube, close it, sanitize it. When you have that capability on a big scale, it's easy. On a homebrew scale, you're gonna be wasting a lot of your beer basically if you're testing gravity all the time and risking exposure to oxygen as well as bacteria. So testing gravity is, you wanna only do it a handful of times if that. I only do my gravities during the, for the pro brew side all the time, almost every day. But home brewing, I just do it at the beginning at the end. When I think fermentation is done, I'll check, check the final gravity. When I think uh, fermentation well, I, don't, I check it, the original gravity. Before I add the yeast, I check the wort, grab the amount of sugar in the wort. But yeah, so we will be in day one of fermentation. You don't see any signs of activity yet for your West Coast IPA. Okay, hmm, I, I wonder why that's upsetting. I wish it would be going bubble, 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 boop, 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 but nothing has been happening. So that's bothering, but it's only been one day. Give it another day, see what happens. Maybe you take a good look at it. It's a plastic bucket or a glass carboy. You look at it and you see a little bit of activity. Okay, there, that's a good sign. That means it's just about to start. And you go to bed and you wake up the next morning and you look at it again and maybe you still see nothing. Okay, <sighs> difficult. So you can either give it the whole work day, give it the whole day, a whole nother night, day two, maybe on day three. Maybe it starts to ferment on day three. Okay, good. <sighs> Whew, you can stop sweating, you know? And so it's starting to ferment, but maybe it didn't. If that's the case, maybe you can give it a nice little shake, the plastic bucket or the glass carboy, nice little shake. If you're in the pro brewing world, what you can do is you can shoot up CO2 at the bottom of the fermenter, like a big bubble, shoot CO2 up there and get all that yeast that might have collected at the bottom up back in suspension. You can also raise the temperature. If you move your carboy or bucket into a warmer area in the house or raise the fermentation temperature on the fermenter if you have capabilities to, that would possibly get the yeast started going again. And if still nothing, maybe you can repitch some yeast, add some more yeast, maybe that was a bad batch of yeast. You can do that. Um, this is all your choice as a brewer. What do you think the real problem is? Only you know as you're brewing. But those are the capabilities for uh, not fermentation happening right there. Those three things. So now, okay, it's day three, fermentation happened, right? It started. It's going off. It's going pretty slow. You start to see bubbles on day three, day three, bubble, bubble. And day four, the next morning, you start to see raging, bubble, 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 a lot, but no, no foam or nothing crazy is coming out of the carboy or overflowing the, the um, dip tube, not the dip tube, the blow off tube in the, in the professional brewery, nothing, no foam, nothing like that's coming out. So you're still doing good. And in the pro brewing world, you check the gravity, see how much it dropped from that one overnight, basically. Um, home brewing world, let it do its thing. And you can start to hear it. Day three goes by and you start to hear massive bubble, bubble, bubble. Good, that's good. That's what you want. You, the first day you'll start to hear a little bit, a little bit, a lot over day three, four, five, six, seven. And as day seven goes around, it, day five goes around even sometimes on some really hard raging yeast. Day seven may be done already, but day seven it's coming down and maybe a couple bubbles, 
not too much from the airlock bubble uh, co2 coming out um, and if you want to keep taking gravities and in the pro brewing world if if you had a dedicated goal of i want a final gravity of 1.010 and it's it's at 1.012 and it's still fermenting a lot you might want to choose to drop the temperature on that to stop the fermentation because you don't want it to get any drier basically or more boozy so that's what you can do if you want to keep it at that 1.010 so it's not going to drop any more to 1.008 if you have the capability to drop that temperature real quick dropping temperature stops the fermentation it's, it cools down the yeast so they go to the bottom and are inactive and on the bottom of the fermenter all you have to do is open a valve at the bottom a little bit and the yeast will start to come out the yeast will start to come out it looks like poop <laughs> And in the home brewing world, it's at the bottom of the fermenter, along with all the hop proteins and hop residue, um, trub, as you call it. And <clears throat> that is fermentation. So first three days, that's when you're, it should start after 24 hours, typically. Sometimes it takes three days. But if it takes more than three days, be careful of, maybe you have to pitch more yeast, shake it up, blow the, ox the, CO the yeast back in suspension with CO2. Whatever you have to do, add more yeast, who knows. And then day three, four, five, six, seven, it's going to be blah, 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 blah. And for a New England IPA, you guys can add yeast during this phase to make it the yeast, or sorry, the hops kind of explode, but you have to be very careful. You have to add the hops as fast as possible, close it, close the valve as fast as possible, because it can start to coagulate and, and you'll, it'll just be a big, big mess and very dangerous so be very fast if you're going to dry hop during the main fermentation uh, period from day three to day seven um, that's why we're going to dry hop on day seven so the fermentation is already pretty much all slowed down we're going to dry hop now with four ounces of whole hop cascade i like whole hops because i get more fresh more juicy bitterness from the hop compared to the more dull powerful effects of the pelletized hops the soft bitterness more within these whole hops and so you just throw them right into the fermenter, close the lid, uh, purge it with CO2 if you can. If you have the capabilities on the pro brewing side, of course, you have the capabilities. Purge that with CO2 always. Now you want no oxygen touching the beer. And you let that sit on the beer, the dry hops, let that sit on the beer for at least three days to five days. After that fifth day, you want to package it, put it into kegs. Put it into a bright tank for storage keep it at cool temperature or bottle it or can it package it and it's been roughly from the start to finish at most two weeks from fermenter to bright tank or fermenter to keg can bottle whatever it may be that's your fermentation you can choose to collect that yeast and if it was a good yeast strain and you liked it performed well good taste good everything good attenuation, all that fun stuff, you can re-harvest it and put it into the next batch. So you gotta be very careful with that. And that is the fermentation process. You'll be amazed what things can go through fermentation. When I was brewing 25 batches, I put things with extreme baking soda, making the alkalinity of the water very, very harsh. Shouldn't have converted the malt, but whatever happened, the beer, ended up being drinkable it was very like battery tasting very high alkaline metallic almost astringent and that's what the high amount of baking soda did but the yeast fermented through all that so they're pretty resilient you'd be amazed just give them a clean place to ferment and they'll be happy don't disturb them too much as they're making their orgy just like humans you don't want to disturb them when they're uh, doing their thing right so let them do the thing and as they start to slow down you can check in on them say hey how you guys doing you guys finished what's your final gravity at check your final gravity uh, get the difference from your original gravity to get your alcohol percent i believe you times it by 1.032 i could be a little off on that number check it to make sure and that'll give you your alcohol percent there's apps online you can easily final gravity original gravity and it'll give you the alcohol percent but that's how you test that with a hydrometer and a test tube. It measures the amount of sugar in the liquid 
So in the beginning of fermentation, you have more sugar, the yeast will eat the sugar and then you measure it again and it'll have less sugar and that difference is the amount of alcohol. And yeah, that's fermentation a little bit. If you guys have any other questions about it, you can always shoot me an email, brewer at thebrewingclass.com. Thank you guys for tuning in. We've got a couple more modules stick with us. We've got some important professional brewing stuff as we get to the end with the pro brewing secrets. Thank you guys so much. Follow along on Instagram. Peace.